Right. Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to our May uh, 2023 MPUY general body meeting. If you are a city representative, please put your information in the chat so we can call upon you during that portion of our agenda. Also in the chat is a link to our general body meeting uh, handout folder, which has our agenda minutes and additional information for this month. A few housekeeping rules. Uh, please stay muted. If you'd like to speak, use the raise hand reaction and you will be called to the floor in the order you are presented. If you speak out of turn, you will be muted as it does violate the Roberts Rules of Order, which we follow during our meetings. If you are on your phone, star nine is to raise your hand and star six is to mute and unmute yourself. You may also use the nonverbal reactions that are at the bottom of the meeting uh, folder, meeting tab on your screen. <clears throat> You may also email us at secretarympy at gmail.com with any comments or any questions that you are not able to have answered during our meetings. If you have more than one member in attendance in the same Zoom link, please leave their information in the chat so that we count it towards their voting eligibility. Lastly, there will be a survey at the closeout of the meeting, and that's for members to submit comments to the executive board or any questions, again, that were not answered during the meeting. Please keep your comments appropriate as this is shared amongst our executive board. First on our agenda is to approve the minutes. Are there any corrections to the minutes at this time? I'm gonna get those on the screen for you. So with no corrections to the minutes, I vote to approve. Next up is, uh, so minutes do not need to be voted. Sorry, I move to approve. <laughs> uh, minutes no, no longer need a vote as long as there are no corrections from the previous month. So just keep scrolling through here for a moment. That way everybody can see them. Again, these minutes are in the general body meeting folder that is in the link in your chat. Next up is our agenda. A motion to approve the agenda. Second, Rebecca. All right, seconded by Rebecca. Are there any opposed to the agenda? As I see no one in opposition, we move to approve the agenda. Next on our agenda is reports from our city department representatives. I will call on your representatives based on their name in the chat. Please keep your comments to two minutes or less. You will have somebody that will let you know when your time is up. So please keep to your time limit as to keeping our meeting moving on a timely manner. Any questions for our department representatives that do not pertain to the general body, please leave them in the chat so they can be answered directly to you. First, I call to the floor, Major Riker. All right, good evening, everyone. So going through crime from last uh, last month compared to March, there was uh, zero homicides compared to one in March. There were nine aggravated assaults compared to 11 in March. There were no robberies compared to one in March. Six burglaries compared to four in March. Six auto thefts compared to seven in March. Ten larceny from autos compared to four in March. And eight larceny non-autos compared to five in March, uh, come up with a total of 39 compared to 33. So a little bit of an uptick. A uh, couple things to note, the uh, murder uh, that happened in the park uh, back in March, that case was solved and Xavier Brown was arrested uh, recently for that murder. He was a 26 year old male. Um, out of those aggravated assaults, six and nine involved firearms. And we still see an issue with uh, vacant or under construction homes as far as uh, burglaries go. Um, as far as the auto thefts go, Kia's and Hyundai's are still an issue. We have a significant number of clubs that have been provided by Kia and Hyundai. Uh, if anyone is interested in one, they can just come by the Zone 3 precincts. We also hope to have a couple pop-up uh, locations around the zone where we can uh, just give them away to people that come up. We're working with the council members to try to locate some spots to do that. 
and uh, I'll go through some arrests if we have time uh, that are significant in the area, but uh, I know my time limit's probably coming short, so I'll leave it up to y'all. All right. Um, I would like to ask Laura Hawkins if she would like to piggyback on Major Rikers as the public safety officer. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think he pronounces it, uh, Madam Chair Ricker. Is that correct, Major Ricker? Yes, it is. My but, apologies. But, I'll no answer to anything. But no yeah. worries. No worries. Uh, would you please uh, tell us briefly where the hot, you, you recognize that MPUI consists of roughly 10 communities. Is that correct? Where are our problem areas currently? If you will give it as briefly as you can. Sure. So one of those areas is over in villages at Carver. We continue to have issues with auto thefts as well as shootings, both shooting in the vehicles, shooting in the homes, and unfortunately shooting people themselves. Um, that's a concern always for us. Um, we've made some significant inroads around the Lakewood Jonesboro area, where we had several arrests specifically near 1634 Lakewood, which is a the convenience store over there. We uh, in the in the recent probably three weeks, we made several uh, arrests involving gang members and firearms from that spot. Um, so that's significant, as well as uh, a burglar that was over on Compton Drive stealing uh, copper copper piping from a basement over there. So we that was a a good win for us, seeing that we do have those issues with uh, burglars in the homes that are being worked on, um, but. Uh, Guns in the hands of juvenile juveniles continue to be a problem, um, not just in NPUY, but all across the city. And has is there, my understanding is there's been a decrease in zone one and zone three in, in part one crimes. Will you at least discuss and let the uh, body know what part one crimes are and whether in fact that data is accurate? Sure, so, the, so yes, as far as the accuracy, it, it is correct, both zone one and zone three uh, have seen a significant um, decrease in crime this year compared to last year, while the other zones are seeing an uptick. Um, the the part one crimes are exactly what I what I went over just uh, a few minutes ago. So it's mm -hmm. it's your your murders, your your rapes, your aggravated assaults, robberies, burglaries, uh, auto thefts, larceny from auto, and larceny non auto. So those are the main crimes we focus on on a week to week basis. Uh, Madam Chair, I think that concludes it for additional reports that we'll do later. Uh, we, we spoke earlier about the villages at Carver, and you are aware of the 200-unit build. Is there any voice of concern you have with the builder being, in fact, the one that is currently managing? So, the you know, what, what we always harp on in, in all of these spaces is technology, right? So, so it's twofold. It's one, that the gates are operating correctly. So the people that are supposed to be on the property are the ones that are on the property, as well as uh, camera systems that actually work. Um, it significantly increases the chances of us solving a crime and in some cases preventing some crimes. Those things are extremely important over in that space and that's all not always been uh, happening over there. So my hope is uh, this developer you know, is able to, to make some changes so that doesn't occur um, in those spaces. That's all I think, uh, Adam Chair. That's all for right now. Thank you. Um, and Major Ricker, there is a question in the chat about a homicide from December 17th near a mall in Gibson. Um, if you're able to answer that directly in the chat, that would be fantastic. Okay. Thank you. Uh, moving on to, or does anybody else have any additional questions for Major Ricker? All right, as I see none, thank you so much, Major Ricker. I thank you for all that you do for our city and keeping us safe. I'm moving Thank to you. Chief uh, Cutter with Fire Rescue. You have the floor. Yeah, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's Chief Couture. Uh, another, another hard name to pronounce. It's okay. And uh, uh, just, uh, just want to talk to everybody tonight about, um, I'm sure you've heard us talk about it before, but it's a big deal, is the uh, Close Your Door campaign. Um, it's a, one from the National Fire Administration that uh, a simple act of closing your bedroom door when you sleep or and closing your children's bedroom doors when they sleep. Uh, can make the difference between life and death. Uh, can make the difference between 100 degrees inside your room and over 1,000 degrees outside your room if there's a fire burning. So that's a, it's a pretty significant um, campaign that I have going on. It's a pretty simple act, too. Uh, another simple act is uh, making sure your smoke detectors are working and uh, that you have 
them readily available and your batteries are changed. Uh, on the, I think on the, uh, the meeting tonight is uh, Ms. Nash, who uh, works for the Atlanta Fire Rescue also, and she's the coordinator of that program. Uh, her information's in the chat if uh, anybody would like that service that we provide. Uh, we have a hydrant season coming up. Um, you know, in the spring and, and the fall, we always go out and make sure all the fire hydrants work. So you'll see our crews out uh, shortly checking those and making sure everything is working properly. So there's nothing to be alarmed about. Uh, they're, they're being held up right now because we have a, a major promotional exam going on for our uh, sergeants, which are the uh, folks who drive the fire trucks. And that'll conclude at the end of May. Um, so we should be able to move into that space and, and get those done. Fantastic, thank you. Do you have any questions for Chief Italian for Fire Rescue? All right, as I see none, thank you so much for all of our service. Have a great evening. Thank you, have a great evening. Uh, next, I call Officer Lawrence with City Department of Public Works Suite Team. Hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening. We have a couple of things this evening. Um, first being, we are still on the bi-weekly collection of yard trimming. This week being a non-collection week. Um, so with that being said, so if you have um, any yard trimming that's over 21 bags or a large pile, even though we are on bi-weekly week of a non-collection of it, you have to schedule bulk for that. Um, so anything over 21 bags, the crews, regular crew will not pick up, but it has to be scheduled for collection. Um, a couple of issues that I've been having in MPUY um, this month as it relates to bulk is the placement of bulk. So you have to make sure it's placed at the curve, um, nothing obstructing it, meaning no vehicles, um, making sure it's not so far in your yard because um, that could prevent you from getting collection. And if that happens, you'll have to go back and reschedule and I can't give you a timeline that it would be for you to get another date. Um, so just make sure you all are complying to the placement of the bulk. Um, make sure it's also not close to your mailbox or a utility pole um, so you can ensure you get collection. Um, dumping in the area, if you guys see anybody, um, just take a picture from afar, a video, get a license plate um, if you're able to, so we can try to hold individuals accountable for that. Um, otherwise, we will be out and have someone to clean up the area as soon as possible if we are um, unable to get individuals to hold responsible. Um, this, oh, I'm sorry, coming up this month, you know, Memorial Day weekend will be coming up. So that Monday, um, week of Memorial Day, we will have one day delay of service. Um, so everybody will be behind one day. So don't be alarmed. I just wanted to put that out to everyone. So that'll be the holiday that'll be coming up. Um, other than that, I don't have anything else. I'll send my questions or concerns. Thank you. Any questions for Officer Lawrence? All right, as I see none, we will move on. Thank you, Officer Lawrence. I appreciate what everything you and your team does for our city to make it run smoothly. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Good evening. Next, we have uh, from our solicitor's office, we have Officer Johnson. Uh, hi, uh, Tobe Johnson from the uh, solicitor's office. I just wanted to run through a couple of programs that we have. Uh, um, our jurisdiction is to handle and dispose of most of the general traffic cit citations within the city of Atlanta. We have a dedicated code enforcement prosecution team that handles all of the code enforcement citations. Uh, the investigators of the city's commercial harassment ordinance also has a dedicated email, which is commercial harassment at atlantaga.gov. Um, we have a prosecutor's uh, city of Atlanta code violations that uh, do, um, they do prosecute some, some of the state crimes. I'm not on that unit, so I don't know exactly which ones they prosecute, but we do, um, uh, our court um, prosecutes shoplifting and marijuana under under an ounce. So those are a couple that my courtroom does prosecute. Uh, we have diversion programs for traffic. We have PTIT for non-serious offenses. Uh, we also have a uh, criminal uh, diversion program, which is called uh, PTI, um, as well as record restriction. 
And uh, we also trained the Atlanta Police Department and other personnel as to their law enforcement and court preparations and uh, effectively reporting and writing tickets. My contact information is in the uh, chat. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Do we have any questions for the Office of Solicitors? Gloria Hawkins, you have the floor. Yeah, uh, Solicitor Johnson, would you quickly explain to folks what the expungement, that expungement, just the requirements? Uh, a lot of folks have asked previously, what's the eligibility to get charges or arrests uh, expunged? Okay, well, I'm not on that team, but uh, definitely we can expunge. Uh, Sorry, let, let me take it back. Record restriction is what I guess is essentially the same. If they have any questions, they should do is I have an email that uh, I'll put it in the chat. Would that be easier? Absolutely. And lastly, you were going to get back on the nuisance action that was commenced by uh, Solicitor Burns, specific individual in a location uh, where there's been an arrest. Uh, and I thought she said she was going to pass you that file the last I spoke to, her, which was about a month ago. Okay. Well, uh, I guess, as you know, uh, Solicitor Burns has going to, um, I think, Gwinnett to, to uh, she's actually the deputy now in Gwinnett County. Nice. But, uh, yes. So, um, so I'm not aware of that, but I do work with a few people that are on that nuisance team. So if you want to email me, I can forward that to the uh, appropriate person. I'll resend it to you. I, I CC'd you in it, but I sent it to Burns. I so oh, I, you sent it to and CC me? Yeah. Okay. Well, if you if I received it, I would have likely have forwarded that email to people that are on that team, uh, or Solicitor Burns would have, and somebody should have gotten back in touch with you. Um so maybe I don't know. Try try sending it again because if I if I saw it and I saw that I was CC'd as Solicitor Burns was the main person, I probably assumed that she was handling it. Uh and have your contact information so they can get back to you, okay? No worries. I think we've got enough for you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Solicitor Johnson? All right. As I see none, we will move on. Thank you, Solicitor Johnson, and we'll make sure to get in touch about these matters. Uh, next up, I have Officer Cofield with Code Enforcement. You have the floor. I um, actually was on my phone, so my computer is not doing well today. So I'm Officer Cofield with Code Enforcement for the City of Atlanta. We do housing code, everything behind the sidewalk. So once you touch your grass, that's my office. Um, right now, I have spoke with the store, and this is just to kind of piggyback with Major Richter. Um, Ricker, I'm sorry. Um, 1634 Lakewood Avenue, she did um, contact me about the violations that were surrounding the store as well as in the store. And they were willing, they're willing to comply. Um, she has called me on, she's called me more than once to actually um, figure out what are the violations. And I told her I could actually meet her because there were several violations that was inside of the store as well as surrounding the, the actual store. Um, I do look forward to meeting her. If I do need to write a citation, I will write one on the spot if, there, if those violations are not uh, in compliance once I get out there to meet her. Um, also, the jump vehicles. I've had a a lot of jump vehicles that are being reported. Um, some I see on the street and that's where you would call the police. Now mine picks up right at the driveway and the grass area. So if you see a jump vehicle parked on the grass, that's me. If you see a jump vehicle parked in the actual driveway, that will be me as well. But on the street and in front of the house, I can't do anything about you. We'll probably need to call the police. So we're here anytime you need us. I'm just a phone call away. I have 
actually put my name and my phone number and my email in the chat. Anytime you need me, I'm here. Thank you so much, Officer Cofield. Are there any questions for our Department of Code Enforcement? Uh, this Renard, I have a question. Yes, yes, sir. Next time, please raise your hand, but you may go ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, you have the floor. Uh, I was going to say, do you handle, like, if Xfinity have, like, their, so I have trees in the neighborhood that are pretty much touching on the power line. Is that something that you would be able to handle? Is that a different uh, department? I would suggest you get in touch with the arborist department, but we if the trees are falling and they're yours, then they will be, you will report yourself if you report to me. So we don't want you to report to you, you report yourself. So I would suggest you get in touch with the arborist, number one. And also I've talked to the arborist. If those trees are dying, you're more than welcome to cut them. But I would say get in touch with, 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 um, with him, uh, with the arborist department and Georgia Power, because you don't want to risk cutting those lines. So that because Georgia Power has a list of uh, addresses that they have on a list that they will come out and cut. And I'm pretty sure it's not in a, a neighborhood area. I think it's maybe on like main streets, but you're more than welcome to report that to the arborists and they will come out and look at those actual trees. Did I answer okay. your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, okay, you're very welcome. Have a good rest of your day. Any other questions for code enforcement? I see one, hey, let's see, 276. I, I see another question, I'll answer it in the, uh, in the chat. All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right, as there are no other hands raised, we will move on. Thank you, Officer Cofield, for keeping us safe. Yes, ma'am. All right. All right, moving on to uh, Claudia Nash with Atlanta Fire Rescue. Do we have Atlanta Fire Rescue on, or Cloud, sorry. Mr. Nash, I believe he is no longer on. We'll move on, if he comes back on, we will move back to him. Uh, next up, I have Allison uh, Marillo with Atlanta 311. Good evening, NPUI. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Allison Marillo, and I am uh, a 311 ambassador. Um, I just have a couple of just a quick reminders here. Um, if you uh, need to report non-emergency items uh, such as pothole reporting potholes or water main breaks, or um, you know bulk pickups, uh, things of that nature, missed trash code uh, code violations, uh, you can reach us in five different pathways. Uh, first, you can dial 311 if you are inside the city. Uh, we, are, um, we are open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Secondly, you can email us at atl311 at atlantaga.gov. Thirdly, you can set up an account at atl311.com. Uh, four, you can download the ATL311 mobile app and and you can chat with our virtual assistant, or um, you can contact us on uh, social media to report any issues. Um, I will be placing everything, um, all the contact information in the chat. Um, didn't really have anything else. I am open to answer any questions, or uh, if you have cases that you need to have escalated or that you have concerns about, uh, feel free to give me that information and I will report it back to management. Um, and then one last thing, there'll be a link in the chat if you want to click on it. Uh, it's a survey link if you want to just evaluate tonight's uh, presentation. We'd appreciate it. Thank you, for, thank you for letting me speak, and I'm open to any questions. Thank you, Allison. Uh, do we have any questions for ATL 311? Um, so we have one in the chat. Since Jonesboro Road is a state road, are we 
and we can't incorporate speed bumps, how do we ask the available speed mitigation options? Um, unfortunately, I'm not sure that this is a ATL 311 question. Uh, we will may be able to work with our transportation department and see what we can do with working with GDOT and a, um, ADOT. Yeah, that would be that would be the case. Uh, but if you will email secretary at MPY, uh, secretary at MPY at gmail.com, uh, we will add this to our list of items to bring up with GDOT. Uh, any other questions for ATL 311? All right, as I see none, thank you so much, Alice and Marilla. I appreciate you coming to our meeting. Absolutely, thank you. All right, next up is Jody Meriday. You have the floor. Yes, thank you. Greetings to everyone. Um, I have put my information in the chat. I am the Ombudsman of Neighborhoods. Here in the event that um, I can assist you or your neighborhood with any trends or escalations or concerns that are going unresolved over time. Um, I just wanted to say hello to everyone and advise all of my information, again, is in the chat. For people joining by phone, I can be reached by cell at 470-316-2382. I can be reached by email at J-L-M-E-R-R-I-D-A-Y at atlantaga.gov. Thank you. Um, do we have any questions for Jody Meriday? Uh, Gloria Hawkins, you have the floor. Hey, Ms. Meriday, thanks for coming on. Hi. It's just kind of Last month, there was some discrepancy. Folks were thinking that that uh, Saturday, I forgot the date now, was the beginning of the police uh, academy. If you will just kind of explain how police. those take place. And then also, if you've got dates on the upcoming academies, both the um, the neighborhood watch as well as the citizens police academy, if you do. I can. So it may be easier for me to email that for distribution to the actual MPU chair. Um, additionally, now that you've brought that to my attention, there's also a Youth Citizens Academy that's coming up. So I'd love to get all of that information to the community and be sure that it is the information um, that you are needing. So could I have 24 hours to report back, please? Thank you very much. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. Yes. I will do it. Give me until tomorrow. Yep, and anything that you email us, we can add to our social media platforms as well as send out through email. Well, Are there any, perfect. Are there any other questions for Jody Meredith? All right, as I see none, thank you for joining us this evening, and I look forward to that information to share with our members. Thank you. All right, are there any other uh, city departments that were not called upon? All right, as I see none, we will move on to our elected officials. First, I call Natalie Hall, Commissioner Natalie Hall, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Is this the presentation section? No, this is just for our um, elected officials. Any um, comments that you may need, you will have your moment for um, a full update uh, during our presentation. So if you need any brief okay. update right now, you may have that time or we can move on and give you an extra minute during your presentation. Okay, um, I, I'd rather do it all together. So if you can give me that extra minute um, during the presentations, that would be great because I have some of the county departments here to tell you about the great services and programs that are free to our residents. All right, perfect. I will make sure to add that into our presentation time. Thank you. Um, next, I would have uh, our Fulton County Library System. You may have the floor. The library is actually with That's me. Perfect. perfect. All right. The so library, Fulton County Senior Services and Fulton County Board of Health, they're all with me this evening. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much for having them here and thank you all for joining. All right. Well, then we will move on to our committee reports. Uh, for our committee reports, please keep them to two minutes or less. Um, I am going to ask that we hold our comments and questions or place them in the chat until after the committees are completed. So that way we can save some time. First up is our zoning, land use, and code enforcement. Jacob Mills, you have the floor. Uh, yes, I don't think Bob is here this evening. So um, I'm not sure. Is it Was there anything that was on the agenda regarding um, any type of 
labeling for uh, zoning as far as you know pdh's uh, rg zoning is is that what bob was going to talk about this evening no he took that off the agenda we will not be discussing pdh at this time since pdh may be removed from our zoning options in the future okay well then uh obviously we have a lot going on uh, between Lakewood, Historic South Atlanta, Chosewood Park. Uh, it seems like everybody is kind of moving in the direction of new construction and new developments coming into all of our neighborhoods. Uh, if there are any questions, you can always feel free to reach out to me or Bob Morris. I will put my information into the chat. Uh, if you have any questions regarding zoning, uh, if you have any questions regarding development, land disturbance, or if you just need a little bit of education regarding some of the acronyms that they use, because there can be quite a few of those, and I know it can be tough to go through and, and figure that out, including uh, a seller looking for uh, particular developments. So I'm going to put my information in the chat, and I will leave it at that. If anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to ask now. Uh Questions will be held to the end, but thank you, Jacob Mills. Uh, moving on to then our transportation and public works, Jeff Delp. I'm not sure if I saw if you're on here. All right, he is not on the call at this time, so we will move on to, uh, is there any additional public safety update, Gloria Hawkins? Just just a couple, uh, Madam Chair, will you direct and remind folks to the template that we sub submitted or uh, solicited last month that we were, the community was successful in, in uh, the LRB denying the liquor application for 1634. Everybody knows that's the little triangle downtown Lakewood. We now have the Amico, a little food, a food mart, little bear, et cetera. And it's been a hard fought battle and it's not always met with success because uh, the city and these licensees uh, push back big time. So there's a template. I don't know if we're, we can, doubt, we can put it in the chat again tonight. But the template is kind of to be sent to Mayor Dickens. We also have um, downloaded his phone number, and it's a it's a it's a request to uphold the findings of the License Review Board, which last month, or no, end of March, I think it was the twenty first, heard the evidence and sided with the community. Uh, thank thank you to Major Ricker. Uh, several sweeps with canines that netted contraband inside the store, weapons, and essentially the the real. Uh, nail in the coffin, so to speak, was the applicant realized. So all of those variables together allowed the record did not. Uh, someone uh, text and asked if there was a raid again at 1634. Not so. There was a, a traffic stop which netted substantial contraband and weapons. I think he mentioned it briefly, but Many felt that it was 1634 being raided again. Uh, other than that, there is, um, uh, again, the, the epicenter of crime right now is the villages at Carver. Um, there's 200 units coming online and many of us are feeling like they're not doing a good job at managing crime in the villages at Carver in hopes that when they do present to the 10 communities uh, this plan that people will show up and say, tell us what you're doing and how you're gonna keep us safe. That's, I think that's it essentially. All right, thank you so much. Um, so we can move on now to our parks, Beltline, and Environment, and that is Rebecca Robinson. You have four. Hey, good evening. Um, nothing much to report. I'm still always looking for people who are interested in parks, the Beltline, and other interesting topics to join the committee. So I will put my information in the chat but we will be having a few volunteer sessions at South Bend Park in June on the 11th and the 25th from 9 to 11.30 a.m. And I'll put up flyers and post it on the various social media sites. So hope you all can join us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we can move over to our Lakewood Oversight Committee, Yolanda Cameron. Are you on the call? All right, moving on to liquid finance. Do we have anybody from liquid finance today? All right. 
Um, moving on to APAP. Kanika Greenley with Lakewood Finance. Oh, sorry, get right ahead. Um, no real updates. We didn't have any applications this past cycle. Um, we're still finalizing um, the website to go online. Um, so waiting on a few details, but those are the updates. Hey, thank you so much. All right, APAP. Yes, hey, um, we've been working, the CDH committee has been working in drafting several resolutions. One was pertinent to something I heard earlier, uh, and we've adopted eight points from uh, the city and the forest. And I, again, uh, we're going to download it in the chat. I think I forwarded it to Madam to um, to the chair. And again, it's a copy of it's it's it is legislation that is being put before city council. I think the most poignant to me was now you don't have to wait until your neighbor's tree fall in your yard if in fact that tree looks like it might be hazardous. Uh, the arborist now will be will now be authorized to take a look at that tree and make a decision as to whether that tree needs to move forward or not. There's also a pushback on developers. Um, apparently a lot of these developments that are MRC, we don't get the C part, we get strictly the residential component. The pushback and along with that is the recompense on trees. Developers are in their own flyway from what I'm understanding are, are there are trees that are being, um, cut down that really are not dead, dying, or hazard. So what is being allowed, if they cut the tree down and it turns out that it's, it was, it's a good tree, they're going to be required to pay recompense. If they decide not to, they're gonna have a moratorium on building at that location for two years. So that is the kind of legislation that is being worked at APAB. We meet every uh, third Saturday, this coming Saturday. Uh, there's archive footage on channel 26 uh, from 10 until roughly one in the afternoon. Uh, it is mainly legislation building. That is what we're doing. We're also looking forward to our Why It Matters. We're going to be honoring one from uh, MPUI, and that's going to be Troy Nunley, Dr. Nunley, who served previously as chair. And we're very excited about all of the folks in MPUI and that we look forward to awarding many of our other community members with such a such an honor. Thank you so much. All right, last on our list is our special projects ad hoc committee. That's me. Hey. Um, so since the last meeting, we've met up with uh, Omar Ali of, um, uh, to discuss the logistics at Ali at Lakewood for the MPUI Unity Day. We have received the total grant funds of $6,500 to put towards the Unity Day. We've also put together and sent out additional sponsorship packages so that we can make the Unity Day um, an amazing one. We are working on developing a social media kit to be sent out uh, to all elected officials and neighboring uh, neighborhood leaders uh, so that they can place our flyers and everything that we are working on and will have updated um, by the beginning of next month. And then we will also be reaching out to ask for volunteers for flyer distributions and all of the neighborhoods. Thank you so much. Did you have any questions for all of our committees? Gloria Hawkins, you have the floor. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Madam uh, Lyra Lofton, for your chairing that committee. We have, in addition to the 6,500 SIG um, grant from the city, we have from uh, Council Member Lewis, we have a promise of uh, $1,000. From uh, Council Member Winston, we have an additional $1,000 for this fabulous day that we look forward to on the 20th of August. Uh, I think it's a Saturday. Am I right, uh, Lyra? Oh, it's it's um, Sunday, August Sunday. 20th from 2 to 6 p.m. Uh, but we also um, uh, have seen and are welcoming uh, 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 Fulton County Commissioner Natalie Hall. I saw her on Monday and she's coming on board at the Y. I spoke to Alyssa and Alyssa said that this, um, she's going to put that question in that request for similar um, uh, levels of participation in our new Unity Day. And she's here before us laughing like, oh, you're calling me on the spot in front of all these people. <laughs> so there you are. Thanks so much, Alira. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions for uh, the general body? Okay, uh, we will go ahead and move on. Thank you all to all of our committee members. Uh, you all do a great work in upholding the goals of our community. Our next item of the agenda is matters for voting. Uh, so our voting matters today is for a zoning 
ordinance. It is legislation Z2329. I called for our city planner who will explain the ordinance for us. Certainly. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Elizabeth Clappen, City of Atlanta. I work with the Historic Preservation Studio. I'm the assigned planner for NPUI. This one, if you did open up the fact sheet, um, might have been a little bit confusing. So you can see an ordinance by Council Member Marcy Collier over Street to amend the 1982 Atlanta Zoning Ordinance as amended in response to the passing of House Bill 1405 in the state legislature in compliance with the OCGA 3666-1 at SEC for other purposes. Um, so just a quick rundown on what this is. Um, House Bill 1405 passed uh, actually in the last um, cycle for the state legislature. And there were a lot of changes that had to happen to procedures in regards to review of zoning applications in the city of Atlanta. And so a lot of that is outlined if you look at Exhibit C for this. Um, I would recommend looking at that one first just because it kind of gives the best breakdown for this where they talk about the different requirements for advertising. So essentially now where prior to this, meetings did not have to be advertised for as long, now they have to be advertised for a longer period of time. And so a lot of this legislation essentially breaks down by different types of, and so you can see it right there, so first of all, you can see there's a couple of changes where things have just been redacted. So for example, all variances are applications versus just an appeal. But this chunk right here, so where you see published notice at least 30 days prior to the hearing, notice shall be published with a newspaper of general circulation. So what folks, if you have applied for a zoning variance or a zone uh, change of the zoning ordinance over the past year, rezoning of a property, you may have noticed that your wait time is a little bit longer. And this is in response to the fact that legally the city of Atlanta is being forced to comply with this state law. So essentially all of the changes and those four different exhibits, A, B, C, and D, each address a different portion of the zoning code that has had to change in response to this month long advertising period. Now, there are other changes, um, and I would encourage you to, if you have not already, to review those because some of it is changes in language, where some of the language was just outdated. Things have been updated as technology has changed, as our permitting process has changed. But essentially, what this zoning ordinance will do is allow a permanent change to the zoning ordinance for the city of Atlanta that updates it to meet the requirements of this statewide law. And this is something that, you know, if any of you have relatives who might live in other communities, that this is something that has been kind of going on in rolling waves since essentially the end of last summer. I believe it was August 1st that all of this went into effect. Thank but you. Essentially, yeah, essentially, this this would be a vote, and somebody obviously will make the motion. But a vote to approve these changes to update the zoning code to meet the requirements of the state. Yes, and um, so part of those requirements, uh, just to kind of inform everybody, um, some of those requirements have to do with our new SAP process, which is through this House bill, where uh, there is a public hearing, and so it does make uh, more of a public comment option. Uh, there's a lot more to this, but essentially this does allow for um, us to uphold to state law. I will now open the floor to any questions. Jacob Mills, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes, I just to say in, in personal, I, I am in favor of this, but I, I because I have the Department of City Planners uh, here on the call tonight, I would like to say that when recommendations are made by the neighborhood, it would be nice if the Department of City Planning would take that into consideration and make those recommendation, recommendations to the developer. Um, just to throw this out on your radar, uh, we, we have a development that we have a serious issue with in our neighborhood. Uh, was not approved on any level from our neighborhood side. And the developer was approved by the city development side and is now moving forward 
with their, their land disturbance uh, permit and we'll be moving forward with their building. And so as the community chair uh, for this neighborhood, uh, our only option left is legal to seek legal counsel. And so I, I would want to put this out there that it is nice that this is what this is for, where people need to be able to come before a neighborhood. But when a neighborhood is in direct opposition with a developer and the city departments continue to approve them, that becomes a problem. So it wasn't really a question. It was more of a comment. Understood, Mr. Mills. And can I ask just for clarification when I pass this comment along, uh, was this something that went before the Board of Zoning Adjustment? W which semi-judicial so this, commission was this? This property was, and I'll, I, I'll call them out, it's 556 McDonald. And this was something that we talked specifically to the developer about. Uh, we asked the owners to come and meet with our executive board. They sent uh, a group of their uh, people, uh, their, you know, site engineers and people like that. Uh, we submitted to them our comprehensive development plan and we didn't get any response from them. They basically said, we don't need to talk to the neighborhood. We're going to follow through the procedures that the city has set forth. And they were, uh, passed with the oppositions because of. I, I understood Mr. Mills, but just for clarity, which board are you discussing just because this is, there this is an intended use and, and the problem is is we had th these are part of a mass rezoning that happened in the neighborhoods along the belt line back in 2003 and the neighborhood had no say so in this so with the sap process that they were able to go through they used a c2c zoning to do all residential rental units below market rate on an area that should have commercial and should have followed our comprehensive development plan. So for clarity, uh, this one, they did not need to do any full rezoning. They were an SAP only due to the fact that they were in the Beltline overlay, and yet they were approved for um, through all um, uh, zoning. And, and, and that, that was exactly what I was looking for. The fact that they were in the Beltline overlay, as soon as he said that, that answered my question. Well, that's, that becomes that becomes the problem because the parking restrictions are relaxed. We, we there's a lot of things that change as soon as you become in the Beltline overlay, and the almost entire neighborhood of Chosewood Park is within the Beltline overlay and also an opportunity tax zone. All right, um, I will drop this um, application in there since it is a little off subject. But as uh, Jacob Mills is speaking to you. Um, Thank you. There are many um, applications that have gone through the MPUY as well as its individual neighborhoods where comments and um, letters have been sent to BZA and ZBA boards as well as through the SAP public hearing process that did not allow for those comments to be uh, reviewed in a manner that was sufficient to the community um, to where they are not upholding the uh, CDP or master plans that oversee the neighborhoods for which they are building in. So this is an ongoing issue that we have um, been working with and hopefully it does not come to any sort of legal matter from any community specifically, um, but we hope that we can move forward with uh, this application at the time for the zoning ordinance um, and work with our city to resolve any uh, concerns with our SAP process. Understood. I will move on to Gloria Hawkins. You have the floor. Yeah, Elizabeth, I don't want you to believe that Chosewood is the only community clapping back on this. Uh, Chosewood has been un inundated with somewhere like five to 7,000 7, multi-residential units in the last 36 months. I'm in the adjacent community, Lakewood Heights. Um, many of us traveling east to the Madison Yard, Moreland area, we take Sawtell to McDonough. This property essentially sits right in that corridor as we travel east, just in front of the um, the federal prison. And what we're understanding that seems really misguided, there are 200 units with only 50 parking spaces. Uh, traveling McDonough right now, I think there's some talk of expansion. It, again, it's not just affecting Chosewood. This apparently it's, it's affecting all of us who are contiguous to Chosewood, who is, which is being inundated. And it seems like there's little regard for the fact that 50 units for 50 parking spaces for 200, 200 units. My understanding is people adjacent in the R4 properties are just, they're, 
they're they don't know what quite to say or do, but they're concerned about the quality of their lives as they bought into our four communities. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you, Gloria. Um, so yeah, so we will um, further address this with our city planner and city um, department of planning and see what more we can do on this. I know it's a little off topic to discuss a specific property. So um, to move back to the topic at hand, which is a voting matter for legislation Z2329, um, this is to bring the city of Atlanta up to the house standards, um, which is House Bill 1405. Uh, Rebecca Robinson, you have the floor. Uh, motion to approve. All right, and there is a motion on the floor to approve. Do I have a second? Second, Heather. All right, I will go ahead and launch the poll. This is a motion to approve the legislation Z2329. Uh, Gloria Hawkins, you are the only one that will not be able to vote through the poll, so please make sure that you leave that in the chat. As we vote, I do want to clarify our voting requirements. If you are a person that is 18 years of old of age or older and a primary resident of MPUI, you are able to vote as a residential constituent. If your business owner owns a property in the MPUI designated area, you are eligible to vote as well. That is if you uphold your three meetings within 12 month period. If you do not have a voter's eligibility at this time, please close the poll um, versus voting to abstain. That way it does not skew our count. And if you have questions about your voting eligibility, you may email us. Uh, we do send out period periodic list of eligibility so that way we can clarify um, as if you have multiple people on a call and do not put them in the chat, we may not count their uh, voting attendance for that meeting. We will leave this open for 30 more seconds. Madam Chair, I'm in favor. I wasn't able to bring the chat up while the poll was on the screen. And I believe. Okay. Oh, it looks like I accidentally closed the poll. Is everybody able to vote that wish to vote? Okay, so our vote right now is uh, 21 yes and four abstentions, zero no's. So that is approved. The motion carries. Nicole, can you repeat how many abstentions? That is four abstentions. 21 and, in favor. And that was 21 with the one extra vote? Yes, it is. Correct. Excellent. Thank you so much for acting on that. Thank you. Let me just make sure I save that poll real quick as we moved on. All right, moving on to our next matter is old voting matters. Madam Chair, I think Paul has his hand raised. Oh, my apologies, Paul, you may have the floor. I'm really going back to the previous legislation and the issue about 556. 556 was uh, was part of the um, uh, Zoning Inclusion Act, which passed in December of 2017. At that time, MPUs did have an opportunity to vote against it. However, Although it was listed in the legislation, it wasn't brought out that if you get inclusionary zoning and do a little bit of affordable housing, um, parking restrictions would be uh, um, not included. So, so, so there'll be no parking restrictions. That's why 556 is the way it is. In the next six months, we're gonna have a similar types of legislation on zoning reform where stuff like suspension of parking re restrictions, inappropriate PDHs, and so forth are, are going to be in the legislation. Unless we're very diligent, we're going to have the same thing even on a broader scale. So, so, so I would suggest everyone pay attention. 
Um, so what Paul is talking about is our rezoning um, a position that the city is moving forth uh, with zoning 2.0. Um, they will be allowing us to amend our CDP prior to the full rezoning, of, uh, which we do not have much information at this time. So uh, before we jump ahead ourselves and start discussing something that we do not have full information on, um, just keep in mind that and keep your ears open for any further discussions with our city when it comes to our rezoning and CDP. Uh, Gloria, you have the floor. Yeah, would you, uh, Madam Chair, ask uh, Chair um, Jacob Mills to uh, give more information as to when the discussion of these uh, various uh, applicants come before. I think folks would get a much better understanding in the CDHS meetings if they had a chance to hear how people like Paul and Bob and Jacob really see the nuances that many of us just don't have the experience or the exposure. Um, yeah, it's a little off topic and we do have a lot of uh, agenda items to go through. So if we can do that towards the end, that would be perfect. Um, we can discuss that towards um, after no, our presentation. We can just download it in the chat when, you know, the regular meeting schedule. I think that would be good enough. Yes, those zoning meetings are the last Wednesday of the month. Um, and we will make sure to put that in the chat for everybody. All right, moving on to, we have no old business or new business. So we will go to our announcements. Uh, do you, are there any announcements from the general body at this time? All right, as I see no hands raised, um, I do wanna make a couple quick announcements. The amphitheater is hiring for concert staff for their concert season. Uh, if you go to the linked information in the chat, which I will drop in there, there are about 11 to 12 concerts at this time from May to October 23rd. And so if you're looking to have a little extra money in your pocket, please go ahead and apply. Or if you have any of uh, uh, friends, family that would like to apply, please share that information. Um, there is also Atlanta Jazz Fest that is starting. So council member Keisha uh, Watts is hosting that our neighborhood jazz series event, Saturday, May 20th. I will also drop that information in the chat um, and there will be other Jazz Fest uh, uh, events going on throughout the month. Yes. And that's, uh, that's council member Keisha Waits. Keisha Waits, my apologies. For oh, no, 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 <laughs> no worries, no worries. <laughs> All right, so moving on to any other, um, are there any other announcements, my apologies? Yeah, just one more. Uh, Harvesting was granted 6.3 million in scholarships. Their celebration was this past Thursday. I sent a little clip. I don't know if we could share it. Um, and their, their theme song was Level Up, but 6.3 million to a very small, was a small graduation class, but 6.3 million to the Carver Steam program in scholarships. That's fantastic. Unfortunately, I don't have that on my laptop to, to share at this time, but maybe if I can switch it over towards the end, we'll, we'll play it at the end of the meeting. Um, so next up is our presentations. Um, again, keep them to three minutes or less. Uh, we will call Natalie, Commissioner Natalie Hall, who will actually have uh, five minutes for her presentation at this time. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Um, do I get the five minutes and then each of the departments get their own three minutes? Um, yes, we can separate that out, that'd be fine. <laughs> great, great, okay. So I um, just want to tell you about some uh, things that I have going on in the district. Um, first, we have the Youth Commission Program. I'd like to get the youth in District 4 involved. Um, it is for 9th through 11th graders. The application process is open currently until Friday, May 19th, until uh, 5 p.m. And this is a great program for our youth to get involved on the government level. They do all types of amazing projects. They meet great people on all levels of government and they get to tell us about legislation they feel we need to pass. Um, if you need more information, you can contact my office. My information is in the chat. I have also my community engagement manager here, Jonathan Harris, and he will put his information in the chat as well. Um, I do cleanups every month in, in Atlanta because we need to really keep this um, city clean and I'm trying to help as much as I can by partnering with a gentleman named Brian Glass 
Casper of the Be Aware Foundation. We're going to do our next cleanup on Saturday, May 27th from 10 to 2, meeting at the Ashby Circle Play Lot. Um, the best thing about this partnership is that we provide community service hours to anyone who may need them. That can be probationers. It can be seniors graduating from high school who need those community service hours. And we also provide assistance to seniors who cannot get out in their own yards and do their own yards. We will rake leaves, pick up trash, bag everything up and leave it for the city to pick up. We will do light clippings and even mow the lawn. So any seniors in need of that service, please contact my office. I always do a senior Beltline tour. I started this in 2018 because I noticed that the seniors were completely disconnected with what's happening in the on the Beltline. So my tour is a three hour tour. We get on a bus, serve a light breakfast, and we serve lunch. And we go around every single part of the Beltline and you learn about everything that's being built, about the businesses, events that are happening and all sites all types of fun that you can have on the Beltline um, and connecting with those people who actually work for the Beltline. My next senior Beltline tour is at Pittsburgh Yards. We will start there at 10 o'clock, 352 University Avenue Southwest on Friday, June 16th from 10 to 2. And I always honor my late boss. For those of you who may not know, I was the chief of staff for six years to the late commissioner, Joan P. Garner, until she passed away from cancer in 2017. And so I honor her every year with a walk in health fair. I'm going to do that walk in health fair this year in the new portion of my district, which is Southeast Atlanta. Um, and it will be on October. October 7th, that's a Saturday, to give back to the community. So any businesses or nonprofits or anyone who wants to participate as a vendor, um, please contact my office. Uh, last year, I had it at Cook Park, got all the local businesses and gave back up to $50,000 to those local businesses. Um, and lastly, I do a youth conference every year. I have two of them. The one coming up in October will be held on Friday, October 27th. I call it CEOs of Tomorrow Youth Conference. It's for 8th through 12th graders from Atlanta Public Schools, Fulton County Schools, private and charter schools. And we come together and have exhibitors, panelists, workshops. We teach them everything from STEM to the metaverse to artificial intelligence, drones, all types of careers, entrepreneurship opportunities. And we always have great guest speakers like Ambassador Andrew Young, the mayor and many others. Um, I will stop there. I have a lot more information. We do offer grant programs at, this, at the county for nonprofit organizations who do anything in arts and culture and the creative industries, youth, seniors, homelessness, disabilities, um, economic stability slash poverty, health and wellness and financial wellness. We also have a veterans grant and um, we have, we would love for anyone who has a business to sign up to do business with the county. There are many opportunities. So um, please connect. We have small business loans and much more. And I'm gonna hand it on over to our library, Marcia, and Senior Services uh, Director Ladisa and the Board of Health, Daryl Carver. Thank you. Your committees uh, have the floor. Hello, um, I'm Marcia Divak with the Fulton County Library System. I am a branch group administrator there and the Southeast Atlanta Library is one of the libraries that I oversee. Um, so I'm just here to share with you um, some information about some programs we have going on this summer. So of course we have summer reading, so and that is open to all ages, and we encourage everyone to participate. Um, it's all done on an online platform, so I'll drop a link for registration in there. There will be prizes at the end of the summer for our readers. Um, Another big thing that we're doing this summer, this will be our second year partnering with Vision to Learn for three eye exams for children. So again, I will drop a registration link in the chat for that as well, so that if you're interested in sharing that, you can. Um, it will be happening at Southeast uh, Atlanta Library, but also in other libraries throughout the 
County. So if you're interested and you can't get an, an appointment at Southeast Atlanta, there are other locations. Um, we have our one book, one read coming up later this summer. Um, I don't know if you participated last year, uh, but we're doing it again this year. Shifted the date a little bit to it'll kick off sometime during the summer with a culmination at the end of September with a visit from the author. And the book this year is The Personal Librarian. So you can check out our website if you're interested in that. Um, the other thing that we have coming up also in October is our second annual Children's Book Festival. Um, we are not finished planning that one yet, but we're working on it. So watch for an announcement for that. Um, and of course, we always have other events going on in our libraries every day. So we have story time, we have free yoga classes, we have homework help. Um, you can just check out our website and go to our events calendar and find more information there. Um, my email address is also in the chat. So if you want to, feel free to reach out to me and I will connect you with what you need. And Marsha, will you please just tell them quickly the benefits of having a library card, all the free services and- uh, <laughs> Yeah, there's so much that you can do with the library card. Um, we have universal class. If you're not familiar with that, you can take classes, you can earn certifications, you can take um, classes that have been offered at Harvard or Yale. There are all sorts of things that you can do through universal class. Um, you can learn a language with Mango languages. Um, you can take skills classes through LinkedIn Learning. Um, there's just any number of things that you can do with your library card. And you can take a family of four to all types of special right. attractions and museums and things across not only Atlanta, but mm -hmm. the state, because there's a Macon Museum that just got added. And if you have any special attractions you'd like to add, please let us know because the library will actually negotiate to add those things so that a family of four can attend those things as well, either for free or at a reduced rate. My favorite is the state parks pass um, that gets, you know, any number of people in for free, as many people as you can fit in your car. Um, so my favorite state park, in case you're wondering, is Cloudland Canyon. It's fantastic. It's up at the border with Tennessee. I highly recommend it. You can look down into the canyon or you can go down into the caves underneath. That sounds wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. We have our next um, committee from you. I believe there is senior you. services. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ladisa Onilagu, Director for the Department of Senior Services. Thank you, Commissioner Hall, for inviting me. I've placed three important pieces of information in the chat for everyone. The first one is our STAR line. It's our information and assistance uh, line. Uh, STAR stands for Soaring Through Aging Resources. So if you have any questions about senior services, our programs, whether we manage it or not, um, that's a great team that can uh, provide resources and referrals to you. Uh, May is Older Americans Month, so I've included a link to our webpage. Uh, Bethlehem at Burdine is in M the NPUY zone. Uh, so that neighborhood senior center and many others throughout the county have programs designed for seniors and the community to participate in. And this is the month we highlight the way that seniors are aging unbound um, this year. And we do that work every single day. Uh, the last piece of information um, that I wanted to hone in on is that we're still looking for volunteers, senior volunteers, to participate in the AmeriCorps Senior Companion Program. This is where seniors go into the homes of homebound seniors and provide light housekeeping or support, support socialization. Um, our department is responsible for administering Older Americans Act funding, so we have transportation, home delivered meals, um, in-home services, um, multi-purpose facilities, adult day help that supports caregivers and respite needs and a whole host of other services. So feel free to contact me or um, send me a note uh, via email. And thank you for allowing me to be with you today. I appreciate it. And we have one more department, I believe. Board of Health. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, this is Daryl Carver. I'm the Communications Director at the Fulton County Board of Health. Um, Close to um, NPUY is our Oak Hill Adolescent and Youth Center. That's where we run several children's program, several programs for parent for parents and children, including Children First, 
Babies Can't Wait, and our WIC program. So a lot of the services that we provide in that area are geared very heavily towards parents to help them better take care of their children. So that's specifically serving the area. The Oak Hill um, Adolescent and Youth Center is off of Memorial. So Memorial, I'm sorry, Metropolitan, not that far away from, um, from your area. So be mindful of those. Also, I'm going, I'm a, I was in the process of putting in the chat on um, new Fulton County Board of Health website, which is FultonCountyBOH.com. It's one of the best resources you can get for just a lot of the programs we're working on overall and a lot of the information we're putting out right now. Um, we're in the midst right now of a heavy push towards um, childhood immunizations. If you drive around Metro Atlanta, you might start seeing some of the advertisement um, to encourage parents to get their children immunized for childhood diseases before the next school year. Um, we're also continuing, even though the public health declaration um, is, is the emergency public health declaration for COVID is over, we are still we are still pushing for people to get vaccinated, not just for COVID, but for but for any number of other illnesses, including just the common flu. So um, be mindful that your board of health is out there, continuing to serve you and all the communities here in Fulton County. Thank you so much. So these are just some of the uh, available programs through Fulton County that we asked Commissioner Natalie Lee Hall to bring to the table. So there are many other departments that are available with other resources. So if you have any other resources that you are looking into or have questions or you know, just have any concerns or needs within your home and in your community, and they have not been uh, brought to attention here at this meeting, that does not mean that they do not exist. And so you may email myself with our MPUI, or you can email um, Natalie Hall's uh, office directly in search of that information. Um, so I will open the floor for any questions for the departments that are here and for Commissioner Natalie Hall. Um, I'm just trying to see, it looks, is there somebody on from Fulton County Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities Department? Yeah, I was going to mention that someone just joined from that department, so they're here as well. And that is good because um, they help us, you know, we should not be putting people who are in uh, mental crisis in jail. They need services and programs. They need to be stabilized and everything. And so BHDD is a great department along with, we do have also a homeless division. So could you go ahead, behavioral health? Yes, Tony, you have the floor. Tony? See, they just dropped in the chat, so. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, hey everybody. You have the floor for two minutes. All right, so yes, um, I'm Tony. Hello, everybody with Fulton County Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities. And um, we are the great bearers of good news for all the residents of Fulton County, making sure that everybody knows where they can go for um, behavioral health, um, mental health services in Fulton County for adults and for the children. Um, we have four locations for the kids and we have three locations for adults. Um, so, yes, we are here just pushing that information. Make sure everybody knows because mental health is such at the forefront of uh, post-COVID life. Uh, we're still trying to figure out how to get back to a quote-unquote normal way of living um, after dealing with um, the whole adjustment of um, COVID. So, um, yes, as far as, as our um, adult residents from the elderly down to four years old, we are supplying services to these um, residents, so making sure that you know they know that we're we're here as a county, we're here as a, a community, and that um, you know we're all just trying to do this thing together, putting one foot in front of the other. Can you tell them about the up uh, the behavioral health crisis center? I might have missed that. I I didn't hear you talk about that. The behavioral health crisis center. Yes, that we are in the process of creating. At Oak Hill. Um, so as um, me personally, um, I can't necessarily speak to the crisis center. 
um, because I I don't really know exactly as far as the crisis center, what's going on with that. Um, but I can speak to the Center for Health and Rehabilitation and the different um, locations that are that we offer these services from, um, you know, the top of Fulton County down to the bottom, um, doing like south, North Fulton County down through South um, Fulton. I can speak to those. Okay. Can you speak to the new mobile unit that we have now available to people? The mobile unit, yes. Okay. So I, oh my gosh, y'all. I wish I haven't even laid my eyes on the actual unit. I've gotten to see pictures. Um, this unit is going to be available so that we can not just go to um, you know, the community events that are here, but now we can actually start reaching out to these neighborhoods and going to the neighborhoods and being ever present so that the people that might have um, issues with tra transportation, um, that won't be an issue anymore. So we can bring these services also along with a licensed clinician to these areas that um, may be dealing with um, transportation issues and things of that nature to receive those behavioral health services. So again, with that mobile unit, it will be all over Fulton County. Fulton County is so huge here in Georgia. So we'll be from the Rudy to the Tootie, from um, uh, the libraries to the neighborhoods, even with the um, like the mental health fairs that we're having at Greenbrier, we just had a spectacular one. Um, so yeah, we will be all over as far as um, um, being able to bring those services to the um, the community and not just asking that they come to our locations. We're going to meet them halfway as well. Madam Chair, um, if I can chime in what Commissioner Hall was talking about, the state of Georgia and Fulton County. Um, the Fulton County External Affairs team advocated for a behavior health crisis center in Fulton County. And so we're happy to report that Fulton County, in partnership with the Georgia Department of State elected officials, approved a um, funding for that. And the funding from the state will be um, 6.5, and the Fulton County put up 13.5. And so this behavior health crisis center will be one of a kind in, at our Oak Hill Center. And um, we're looking for that to anticipate it opening in January 2024. And so this will be a center that will be around the clock um, and people don't have to be incarcerated to come to it. If they're just having a crisis and they need to talk to somebody, this center will be that avenue for them to do it, along with our mobile unit that can now come to MPU meetings and stuff like that. So when you're having MPU meetings in person, we are more than happy to bring the mobile unit out. We would just have to request it and stuff like that or any events that you guys are having. So that provides a little avenue with that. Um, it is our goal and our hope that when the next session start for us to advocate with the state for more money to um, provide another crisis center and to fully fund this. Um, and so we appreciate our elected officials for, from across the street for what they did to help us get this kick started. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you so much. I see hands. Yes, let me go ahead and open the floor for any comments, questions. First, I have Kelly Petty, you have the floor. Um, thank you. Um, this is for um, Natalie and her team. Um, as you heard from Gloria at the top of the hour and then also um, from Alira um, during the committee uh, presentations, we are having Unity Day, um, August 20th. And so we really, really would like for um, you to be there as well as um, your team, um, including the Board of Health, Library, Senior Services. Um, I'm about to send an email right now over to you all if you can take a look at that. But we definitely want to be able to have you all. This is a great opportunity for you all to get directly in touch with your constituents here in NPUY. This is our first one. Um, and we definitely would love for you all to be there. We would have room. Um, including to have the, if we want to have the bookmobile there, um, mm -hmm. if Marshall wanted to do that, um, if you want to have Board of Health there to, with a table, um, behavioral services, senior services, this is a great opportunity for you all to um, be there. Thank you, Daryl. I'm going to put you in here um, in the email before I send it. Um, if you all could definitely be there. And then I know you talked about possibly some grants and stuff. 
Of course, we can talk about that offline, but if there's opportunity for some financial support, we would definitely love it. So I'm about to send the email literally right now, um, and we would love to have you there for, for this event. We're hoping for a huge turnout and want our representatives, all of our representatives there from both the city side and the county side. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kelly. I'm excited about that. Um, as far as the grants, they don't open up until the fall. The county is not on the same budget cycle as the city and the state. So our budget cycle is from January to December. Um, so those grant opportunities would be available around October, uh, September, October. Please put that in your email because uh, we will connect you directly to the county executives that manage those grant opportunities. And as far as uh, bringing stuff to your the Unity Day, we would love to. There's so many mobile units, smoothie bike, and all types of things that we'd love to bring. So just put the details in the email and we will get that started. Will do. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Kelly. Kelly. That saved me <laughs> from announcing that. And just CC me on there. Um, that way we can make sure that we are um, including any of these additional resources in our MPU meetings as well. Yes, we'll do. And thank you, Jonathan, for sharing those other emails. I'll send it to everybody. Thanks. Thank you so much. All right. Next, I have Gloria Hawkins. You have the floor. So again, uh, welcome and thanks again, uh, Commissioner Hall. I just saw her on Monday. She's been onboarded at the Y. I didn't get a chance because we were a little bit discombobulated there to approach you. You're, I, we have, we have roughly 10, uh, 10 elected officials that uh, we are specifically speaking to with hopes that they will bring on their full regalia of support committees that will participate in Unity Day. And lo and behold, my assignment, you're third on my list. And I said, okay, let me get at a time where we seem less less dysfunctional here at the Y. But my, my question to you specifically, Kelly's done a pretty good job of outlining and I, I will follow up as well. It deals with something that I will take offline. Um, I, I, I'm on ACRB and it came to our attention this week that Sheriff Labatt will not allow us to interview the inmates who have complaints against um, uh, APD and correction officers, unlike the prior administration uh, without a subpoena, even though these individuals are housed in city jail it falls under the auspices of the county. So I'm putting that out there and I'm gonna follow it up. We just learned this this past week. Uh, again, uh, inability now to, in, to interview the inmates who fall under the auspices of the county but are housed in the city jail, unlike all times before with the, the prior chef, sheriff. Oh, okay, so, you're, so it's the inmates that they moved from the county jail to the city jail that's because right. they're trying to relieve the overcrowding. That's right. Okay. But those they have they have submitted complaints against APD and, and uh, the against APD. Uh, APD because many of them that are that are housed there are under charges and are there as a result of arrest by APD. Fulton County Jail houses all of those individuals, but again, we're throwing casting the net wide because it seems to be in violation of due process without. It becomes more onerous, so um, we will. Uh, um, I, I'll reach out to you individually. We were asked to go to all of Fulton County commissioners who have jurisdiction over the jail in general, but we not. Don't, we don't have jurisdiction over the jail. The sheriff is an elected official. He is the law enforcement agent for the state for the he for Fulton County as a whole. We have no jurisdiction over telling him what to do. We simply fund him and we approve what comes before us uh, or disapprove what comes before us um, that he presents to us. He's elected by the people just like we are and he's elected to run that jail. So um, whatever laws he has to abide by are under his jurisdiction for his elected seat. I think the belief is that, that to, to reach out to the commissioners as they are also Fulton County uh, employees I think that's the thrust so I think for the sake of time since this is a, a very specific matter that's not to the general body um, if we can take this offline in a direct and for communications with Commissioner Hall um, and see if that can be resolved please later. send me an email and I'll send it to our county attorney so she can explain it to you thanks thanks Natalie thank you you're welcome um, are there any other questions or comments for Commissioner Natalie Hall and the rest of her team and divisions that she brought here today 
All right, as I see none, I do want to thank you for bringing together some of the different departments and uh, different opportunities that you have to bring to the members of our community. So hopefully we can share this information with everybody outside of this meeting because this 47 people does not equate to our 1,200 people that live within MPUI. So we will try to put together a nice email to send out to everybody. So any additional information that you can share with us that you would like us to share with each member, uh, please go ahead and email me. Absolutely, we'll send all of the programs and services pamphlets via email. Jonathan will send that out to you. There are a lot of them. And I just wanna say lastly, we did vote at our last meeting for Uber and Lyft to remain $1 each way for our seniors. So please contact your star line to sign up for your senior services. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate the time. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, next item on our agenda, we have eco addendum. It is living with trees. This is from Edward Mor Morrow. You have the floor. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having us. I also have Mrs. Catherine Kolb um, with me as well, and uh, she's going to start off. Hi, hi, everyone. Um, I know a, a few folks um, love y'all at MPUY and working at South Bend. I want to just give a, a, a super quick shout out. Thank you so much, Gloria, for your comments on the tree ordinance and the resolution. That's just fabulous. Um, and I wanted to also give a little shout out to Rebecca Robinson. We've been doing a lot of work out in South Bend Park. So um, we'll love for you guys to come out. We have some really South Bend Park has all these just super cool forest details uh, from in neat native species that are edible, all kind of cool stuff out there if y'all want to come out with us. Um, I wanted to just um, give just a super brief intro um, uh, in terms of the tree ordinance and the conversations we've been having about that uh, in talking with lots of folks in the neighborhood. Uh, when we talk about trees, people are concerned about trees falling down. So Edward, who is a certified uh, uh, ISA cer certified arborist and I have put together a program that we're taking out to neighborhoods so that people can really learn about uh, if their tree is a risk or not. A lot of people maybe cut down trees that are healthy because they're afraid of them. And then on the flip side, sometimes people uh, wait too late when there's a tree that may have some signs that it's unhealthy and then it actually becomes a risk and it may fall, but they, they, they could have known that in advance. So we're doing this really cool neighborhood educational uh, programming. Part is a super short presentation we're gonna do right now, but what we would love to do is do a walk, an actual walk. We've done this uh, uh, in uh, some other neighborhoods over in Adams Park, over in uh, NPUI. We'd love to do a walk with you, where it's really hands-on and you can see exactly uh, some of the things that we're talking about. But Edward's gonna go ahead and launch us into uh, our PowerPoint here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And this is Living With Trees show. So as uh, Catherine alluded to, um, we use this as an opportunity to kind of dispel a lot of myths about trees as well. And helping people kind of see, um, you know, trees give us different signs. So if you're able to see the sign, you can kind of uh, predict what will happen in the tree. So if there are mushrooms, uh, conks, um, um, holes in the tree, maybe there may be different cavities cavities, uh, just making people more aware of the trees in their neighborhood, they're able to kind of assess. So we go through these different checklists of different things. And it's a real cool process because, again, we're showing um, uh, residences in their community about what makes a tree safe or un un unsafe, um, the different type of leans, uh, why branches may drop, and also how different species may look detrimental. But um, some trees just have certain characteristics that um, may not be a bad thing. And a lot of times we get things like lichens and moss. Um, a lot of times we think these are harmful, but they're really not. So uh, we just use this as an opportunity to, again, dispel a lot of myths and empower the communities to uh, retain trees or take the necessary action if a tree is hazardous or dangerous. Yeah, uh, we. The, this is an extraordinarily short version of our, our information, our PowerPoint. We can do a lot longer PowerPoint if you like. It's about 20 minutes. Lots of myths that people uh, don't really think about. Uh, people think that, you know, a tree 
lives about as long as a person. That's really not true. Most of the trees in our ecosystem are living about 200 years, oftentimes more, maybe even 500 years, 700 years. Um, and then another one of the myths that we have uh, is uh, about um, roots, tree roots. Uh, uh, a lot of times uh, people think that tree roots go way down deep in the ground, but but they don't. They're all up on the surface. So the way we run our lawnmowers and stuff like that can have really detrimental effect on tree roots. Anyway, we go through all kind of details and facts, and um, and you can really, really learn a lot with our presentation. I have to give just a shout out right here. These two pictures are taken in South Bend Park. And one was a tree that was covered with English ivy um, and we got the volunteers to cut it off. And, and here's another tree over there in South Bend Park where people were working to get English ivy off the trees. One of the best things you can do for your trees is to get the English ivy off of them. Um, but when we do that, we wanna be a little careful because you know we have some native vines. I think there's a slide for, the, for uh, a native vine that's next. Um, but sometimes like things like trumpet vine, uh, really important for hummingbirds, has beautiful orange flowers. Anyway, it's a whole, it's a whole little um, training in how to recognize uh, things that uh, may, may show that your tree is a risk. Um, just some things to keep in mind. Um, if you have a question about your tree, call an ISA certified arborist. Sometimes people who just cut trees for a living will tell you your tree has a problem just so they can get paid to cut it down. But a certified arborist uh, has a lot of information and can go through a, a checklist of, of things that, that really can tell you a lot about your trees. Uh, Edward can talk a little bit more about this. He does this all the time. Um, he does checkups. Uh, it's good to give big trees an annual checkup. Uh, and then we also, in our in our presentation, we talk a lot about some of the the, the tips that you can uh, tips that you can learn on how to take care of trees in your yard, such as not piling a bunch of leaves up at the base. Uh, th these are the kind of things we go through, um, and we love we love for you to join us either either for a longer presentation or for a walk. And if you have a date that you'd like to do walk, we can set that up for you. I thought it might be nice to do it in South Bend. Um, might be nice to get some folks out in the park, but um, we'd be happy to just do a walking tour uh, in a neighborhood, just around a few blocks or something on a quiet street, not a busy street, but. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so as she spoke, um, there is opportunity for our neighborhoods to um, request a individual meeting where they would come out to your community, whether it's your park or within your neighborhood to walk and identify trees and the concerns that uh, may arise from the condition of the trees as you're going through them. Uh, so if you do have um, a group that would like to schedule any of these uh, neighborhood walks or additional learning um, information, please email one of these two contact informations on the screen. Um, I will go ahead and open up for any questions at this time, uh, do we have any questions or comments for uh, the team here? All right, I have one hand raised. Gloria Hawkins, you have the floor. This is the quickie. Uh, this is kind of a Edward Morrow. Isn't that the name of the federal building out west for some reason? Did I get that right? The Edward Morrow building? Oh, yeah, and also the uh, famous newscast. Caster. He that's spelled right. his name with a, a U instead of an O, though. That's right. That's right. right. <laughs> more, more narrowly, Catherine, have you all uh, adopted any of those eight outlined uh, tenants that was put forward to send to the city in that resolution or the amendment of the ordinance that city in the forest was? I forgot the name of the group now. I mentioned yeah. them early. Yeah, I'm hoping that was in the resolution, and I'm hoping that those will be adopted. I got a note from Jim Martin about that. That's right. That's yes. exactly right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I think Jim would benefit from seeing how you all have outlined or described the dead, dying, and hazardous trees. I don't think we were able to fashion, and that was one of the issues we felt like it was too ambiguous or there was not a clear definition as such that it was the process was being abused. But what I just saw was a much more narrow defining uh, or description yeah. of what is deemed to be reasonable if you're going to attribute that mm -hmm. status. We, we had that language. I can get that to you in the draft that we wrote some time ago. We had that written out. I can send that to you if you like. Okay. Has Jim seen it? I, you know, I honestly don't remember. It's probably been a while since he's looked at that draft, but I can, um, I can get that to both of y'all. Please. Be fantastic. If you can share that to the MPY email. Okay. 
Uh, next is Jacob Mills. You have the floor. I just want to say that this is a great topic. I love hearing about this. Personally, I am a big tree hugger and I repurpose a lot of trees in the neighborhoods as they come down, whether it is something that is DDH, as a lot of people are using that as an excuse to take down healthy trees or whether they are healthy trees that are coming down and have been approved by the city arborist for new developments. Um, I love to see more tree protection. Uh, a lot of developers don't take into consideration the value that these trees offer uh, and they will not manipulate their sites and their site plans based on that. So it is nice to see that we have uh, more people in the neighborhood that love the trees as much as we do in Really, I think everyone in Atlanta, this is one of the biggest issues that I constantly hear is removal of trees and removal, illegal removal of healthy trees. And, and like you had mentioned before, a lot of developers will come in and just say, hey, let's get rid of these. Um, you know, it, it's easier for us. And they'll, they'll say we can take it down, whether it's a healthy tree or a DDH. So uh, this is uh, great information. Thank you for this presentation. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. And if you can leave those um, email contact information and phone numbers in the chat. In addition, I see the flyers were dropped in there just so that people are able to get that contact information readily and easily. I would appreciate it. Okay. Let's see. All right. Thank you. So thank much. you so okay. much, Madam Chair. Absolutely. Are there any other questions for Eco Addendum? All right, as I see none, thank you guys for coming. I really do appreciate you coming out and um, you know, informing the community of the services that you have and how to handle tree concerns within their neighborhood. Okay, y'all are welcome. Thank you all for having us. Thank you. Thank you so much. You. Next on our agenda is men No Menthol Movement ATL. Ms. Kelly, you have the floor. Ms. Kelly, you are muted if you are trying to speak. I'm gonna start over, sorry about that. But good evening, everyone. My name is Jalissa Kelly. I'm the project coordinator for the HEART Coalition. HEART Coalition stands for Health Education Awareness on Research on Tobacco. We've been in the community for over 25 plus years. Um, Location-wise, we're on Cascade. Um, in the year of 2020, we birthed what is called the No Menthol Movement ATL. This initiative is a strategic initiative with um, community members that live, work, and play in the city of Atlanta, along with our um, local um, businesses, organizations, um, depart health departments that have been um, working alongside with us with our initiative. The purpose of this initiative is really to end the sales of menthol and flavored tobacco products as it um, impacts the lives, many lives, um, specifically in uh, communities of color, um, LGBTQ communities, um, Asian Americans, uh, Pacific Islanders, along with women's health. Also, we wanna protect our kids um, to eliminate the early initiation of tobacco use. So uh, just a load of data or some data points, I won't take too long on this, but there's over 480,000 lives that are lost um, due to tobacco related health and 45,000 African-American lives that are lost each year due to tobacco usage, specifically with menthol or flavored tobacco products. So why is this an issue? Um, menthol makes it easier to start, harder to quit. We've seen saturations of signs in communities, communities of color specifically from big tobacco. Um, that makes it um, harder for our citizens to stop and easier for them to start. Um, therefore, our coalition have been, been actively in the community to further educate, which is why we're here today to even educate you all a little bit more on the impacts that has been caused um, has been caused and the health impact of um, one's health. So also, we also like to educate our retailers about saturations of signs, um, product placements in the community while we are waiting on the FDA to make an actual um, proposal. Well, they made a proposal last year in April 2022 regarding 
um, and FDA ban. And we are on a local level, just continue to push the efforts while we are educating. So part of this initiative has allowed us to just really speak out on menthol and flavored cigarellos. Um, while this ban does not restrict or uh, increase any criminalization on individual use, sometimes there's some disinformation and misinformation around this. All this does is um, it regulates um, distributors, um, in regards to sell. So this would not impact individual um, in the community, even if they have a, a menthol cigarette specifically. Um, once again, that I mentioned about the 45,000 lives that are lost each year, and we just are trying to push the needle a little bit further to address this as it is a health equity issue as it uh, relates to disparities in our community. Um, how we can continue to work together, what we've been able to do was work with our local health departments. Adam right Chair, now, we're it's time. Um, yes, that'll give you 30 seconds to wrap up, Ms. Kelly. Okay, uh, we've been working with the local health departments. We've been doing sensation efforts. We've been doing tobacco retailers. We've been working with the college and universities, including Morehouse School of Medicine, Mercer University, um, Georgia State, American Heart, American Cancer to address this issue. Um, we would love to be able to um, continue to educate you all on this issue as we're moving forward. And also just to step into one of our meetings. We meet on the fourth Thursday each month from 11 to 1230. So thank you all for your time. And we look forward to just continuing to educate you on, on the use of uh, tobacco, but specifically how menthol and flavored tobacco products are really, really impacting our community. Thank you. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate this as uh, much of our youth with the flavored tobacco are becoming smokers now. Um, and we definitely want to mm -hmm. um, bring that awareness to our community so that way we don't end up with a pandemic of um, health concerns. So, and we've seen an increase of it. Uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. So we would love to provide more education around this. Like I said, we've been partnering with all our health agencies, but also this is coming from a community voices for those that live, work, and play in Atlanta. Everything's evidence-based. So we'll love to be a champion for you all to address tobacco use. Thank you. Fantastic. I'll open the floor for any questions and comments. Kelly, you have the floor. Um, can you just put your information in the, in the comments? Because I would love to get okay. that. Thanks. Sure, we'll do. Thank you. I'm doing it right now. Please also include the meeting information for those that want to attend. And if you have a flag or anything you would like us to post on our social media, we are happy to share that with the rest of our members. Thank you. We'll do. Thank you. I'll do that right now. All right. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate your education for our members and uh, further involvement within our city to help our, our health issues. Uh, that is it for our presentations today. So we will move to our planner's report with Elizabeth Clappin. You have the floor. So I have no updates other than uh, thank you for voting uh, on Z2329. Um, the one other thing I will mention, um, because I know that you did um, put forth a candidate for the Community Design Awards, is that Currently, the Community Design Awards, which are normally held this month, are on hold. Um, they have not rescheduled a date yet for when the Community Design Awards will be held. Um, most likely, it will be sometime in June, but once they have a date for that, it will be announced. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, so I am trying to get up this um, short video that was from Gloria for us to go through just to see. I yeah. Like it's going to, so I'm just going to go ahead and drop this in the chat for everybody um, so that you have the opportunity to watch it if you choose to. Um, yes. And this is for the scholarship program that was going through Carver. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Madam Chair. It just feels so good. $6.2 million. I don't believe the graduating class was more than, I don't think it was more than 50 students, uh, that senior class. But um, they're dancing and partying at the Ali Event Center to a tune that's called Level Up, Level Up, Level Up. And it's just so cool. But it's really cool seeing the energy. But 6.2, 6.3 million is, is energy in and of itself. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. We definitely want to share that with our community. All right, before we close, are there any other uh, announcements from our community members? as we do have, technically have 10 minute time. Uh, Kelly, you may have the floor. Just one more time, not to bug everyone again, but we definitely would love to see everyone out for Unity Day on August 20th. This is our first one, and this is our 
you know, our time to come together as a community, really get to know each other. And so knowing that there's, you know, over, or at least up until a point, there was over 40 people on the call. We definitely want to see all of you all here, including our representatives. Um, so again, August 20th, Sunday um, from two to six, and we definitely want to see you all there. Absolutely, yes. Our 56 members that we had joined today does not equate to the amount of members within our community. So we certainly want to make sure that we are uh, sharing our information with all members within the community that are not attending MPUY meetings. So Ma Ma Madam Chair, may I add, even in light of inclement weather, we have a alternative plan. We'll be going in the venues building in event there's in inclement weather. So rain or shine, we're on for August 20th. Fantastic. All right. Well, as usual, we will be hosting our after party meeting. So if you would like to stay on and have any further discussion with members or your executive board or any of the departments that would like to stay on as well, uh, you are free to stay on. This is just an open dialogue with members of the community and nothing that um, you know would hold specific to the MPUI meeting. So uh, as it is 8.50, I do call the meeting to adjourn. Are there any in opposition to adjournment? All right, as I see none, the meeting is adjourned at 8.51.